What's going on, Scott? Welcome back to the episode of Season 4 from Park City, Utah. We are out here again at Canyons Village for another ski day. Unfortunately, we don't really have too much new stuff going on. I've been like looking on the website every morning, like are they opening up new terrain? Have other mountains opened? But to be honest, we got about like, I would say six inches here in Park City and about a foot up in the Cottonwoods this past weekend. So definitely well needed, but still not really, um, you know, not a ton of snow. But I decided because it is such a blue, beautiful bluebird day to just go out, get out in the mountains take a few laps. But in an effort to keep things a little bit more exciting, I am gonna use my new 2024 Armada White Walker 116s today. I basically walk past them every day and I've just, I've been wanting to use them, but I feel like I haven't really had the proper conditions to take them out, but I'm kind of like, why don't I just use them anyways? Like <laughs> it's by no means like the right conditions for a ski like this. There's very little camber in the ski. There's a lot of rock around the tip and the tail. So this is, ski is, is really designed for powder, but I'm curious to see how it kind of does and stuff like this. I use the 116 JJ all the time. And so kind of interested to see how it how it stacks up on some less than ideal conditions with the 116. the year like in all the other gondolas they go best with the bindings facing it. the cab yeah and they they kind of lean out and tuck themselves in right on thank you the good news is that my white walkers get to come inside with me i guess the maybe not so good news is that i don't know i was kind of confused they said twin tip skis go inside the cab now but i feel like if you have a narrow twin tip ski it should fit in the side. So I don't know if they meant just like wide skis or twin tips. I don't really know. I was going to see if they fit. They don't fit together. So I was putting them in one by one, but they just said bring them inside. So I think the 116s here at Red Pine can be coming inside with me. Guys, these are my old bindings from my old JJ's that I just put on these to kind of save money. And all right, no line. Thank you. 
So these white walkers are the 185s. They also make them in a 192, which I was kind of on the fence getting. So hopefully these work out. And like I was saying, I put my old Tyrole Attack 16s from my Stoke King 2018 JJs on these skis. So I didn't get new bindings. I just put older bindings on these skis. And I mounted these at the factory recommended point. There's also a Sammy Carlson mount point, but I am not Sammy Carlson. A lot of us are not Sammy Carlson. I'm not, you know, landing big switch tricks and all this sort of stuff. So I just went with the factory mount point on these and I honestly go factory on all my skis and I find that that's kind of where the ski was mostly designed. And if you don't know where to put your mount point, my recommendation is that you should just go to the factory spot unless you are obviously a really advanced skier and you know kind of exactly the plus minus you want from center and all that sort of stuff. I would just say go factory and you should have a great time on the ski. So I'm excited, uh, but like I said at the van, these are not the ideal conditions for a ski like this. So I get it. You know, I don't need to hear, oh my God, I can't believe you use the 116 power ski in that. Like, yeah, I'm stoked to try them out. I love the 121 White Walker. So we have a beautiful day, not a singular cloud in the sky as far as I can see. So I'm also using a different pair of lenses today. So far, they're pretty sweet. These are sick, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah. First time taking them out. Oh yeah, how are they? I haven't done a run yet. Right. <laughs> yeah. Find out. yeah. White Walkers are a showstopper. <laughs> All right, I have a feeling I'm gonna be catching a lot of my edges because they're sharp. I forgot to start my freaking ski tracker. The biggest thing I noticed is just the Karuba core. It's such a lighter weight, poppier material. The 106 in the Poplar Ash is like, it's a lot stiffer. It's better for like, kind of just uh, groomers and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, the pop, the Karuba on this is like, very, very easy to build up the energy.
So to put this in the comparison, I've been using the ARV 106 at a 188 length, which has a lot less rocker than something like these. And these are 185s with a ton more rocker. So my first impression is that they feel short. My second impression is that they have a lot more energy than something like my 106s. I think because it's a longer ski and it's also made out of the poplar ash core, um, this being their softer wood, it just makes it so much more easier to sort of build energy in the ski and just sort of create pop that otherwise wouldn't be there. So being able to sort of get on the, the tails and sort of push yourself up and out of the, the ski way easier on something like this. So yeah, there's only so much I can do to like get a feel for a ski like this. Very sort of mellow groomer, lots of people. So it's, it's difficult, but when I notice things like the energy and the pop like right away, I think it just makes it would be a very, very fun ski given the right conditions. I feel like having like a speedboat, a powerboat, and I'm like on a small lake, if that makes sense. Can't really maximize what the ski is for. So, super fun though. Just gonna keep skiing on them. I by no means use the ski enough to like review it. This wasn't meant to be a review, anything like that. I just was honestly trying to mix things up, just like trying something different and I wanted to use the skis, but um, I just, I need to be clear that the skis are not meant to be like an all mountain ski. They're not meant, I, I don't even think the ski style is meant for a lot of people. I feel like even though the lines were short, there was a lot of people on the run. So it was hard, you know, just obviously being heads up. That's what I always preach, no need to sort of rip through areas where there's a lot of people in, in just to get a feel for the ski so could only do so much but uh yeah i was, was impressed they're a lot different than the arv 106 that i've been riding about 17 days now this year overall it's a pretty chill day out there like i said there just really isn't a ton of options right now when it comes to skiing so rather limited but it's interesting because kind of in the morning i'm like man you know, like I want to go up, like what am I going to film? How am I going to do it? And then like when I get up there, I'm like, all that stuff's just like, it doesn't really matter. It's like just being out there, getting on the lift, getting off the lift, making turns, like it just feels so good. It's just like kind of hard to describe, but it's just like kind of thinking about doing the same run, same lift. It's kind of like meh. And then I get up there and I'm like, yeah, why didn't I just 
why was I even second guessing myself? So we are coming into Thanksgiving weekend. So I think I'll, you know, I'll definitely get some days in here. There's supposed to be some snow on the radar, but who really knows at this point? So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday. I am truly grateful for each and every one of you who have made this possible over the years. It has been many, many years now that I am on YouTube. This is my second year full-time YouTube. And so, yeah, couldn't do it without your guys' support. And, and hopefully there's there's more good things coming and we can continue continue moving the uh, the Stoke train forward. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, fam. Peace out.